Oh, yeah. Got, got that. Welcome to Guys Garage. This is the days when I love my job. Yeah! Well, I guess the fun's already started. Today is all about abuse. We got a beater car. It's seen its better days. We got a little science experiments going on. We're gonna have some fun with it. We're gonna teach you a few things while we're at it. So it's gonna be a wild ride today. Stick around. So we're pulling out our basic little two liter here. And uh, you know, Bird took one of his infamous parts runs and uh, somehow destroyed the motor. So uh, watch this, you'll find out how. Now we're in God's country in my book. North Carolina mountains, Appalachians. You know, we're all pretty familiar with, you know, our belt drive system, you know, our Fiat, you know, some of the terms that are called front and accessory drive. You know, in the old days, it used to be a bunch of V-belts. Those V-belts drove different things like your alternator, power steering pump. But now that's all done with one system or one belt, your serpentine belt. Now that belt's gonna wrap around a lot of different pulleys, tensioners, so we're gonna do a little experiment today. We're gonna take the belt off. We've got the thing nice and warm. Pull that belt, we're gonna go for a drive. We're gonna see what kind of bad things happen. You know, the engine itself, what kind of bad things could happen to you if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. We pull this belt off, it should get pretty exciting when we go for a drive. Let's see how long this sucker lasts. Got my beater. Let's see if she still runs. Oh yeah, she still starts. Let's see how far she goes. All right, now already, ah, I have no power steering. So you can imagine in the real world without a belt, you know, be a little precarious. So I'm gonna take her a little bit easy, but let's see what happens anyway. Well, already my temperature gauge, and I just literally got on the road, it's starting to climb pretty fast. So this could be pretty quick. No power steering, going into the turn, hot. Ugh. There she goes. All right, now I'm gonna try to sit back and enjoy my trip for as long as it lasts, which may not be very long. You can see our alternator light is on. We're gonna start losing, obviously, battery power, you know, electrical systems, so anything from our Headlights, wiper blades, all our safety equipment. That's all gonna start to go out the window pretty quick. She's a steaming, a bucking. Uh oh. I don't know if we're gonna make it. No. Come on. I just need a good landing point. Cause she's dying. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, folks. I think this is as far as Bessie is gonna take us. Oh. Well, there you have it. We weren't very nice to her, and I feel a little bad, but you know what? She did us good for a little while. She tried hard. A lot of steam coming out of that radiator, so I want to just let it cool down for a little bit. I'm going to give Dwayne a call. I don't even know where we're at. I just followed his directions, so let me try to get him to come give me a ride back. Yo, oh, lost call. Dwayne, help, buddy. You know, I was kind of figured I got a problem with the car. Um, I'm on the side of the road, you know, next to that mountain thing. Could you come get me? I might as well take a break until help arrives. You need a hand? Yeah. Sir, need a hand? Uh, yeah, I, I need a hand. Uh, yeah. All right, we're just doing a quick snatch on this thing. We're not showing it any love because we haven't so far. Why start now? Yeah, normally this would come out the bottom, but we're pulling out the top salvage style so we can show you what's going on in this baby. But right now we gotta take a break, so stay tuned. Welcome back. Now you wouldn't think this one little bill was that important, but you take it off and it destroys this poor whole little engine. Now it's because it's doing a lot of critical functions. 
Now, a lot of times we only think about an engine as being this part. This is really just some pistons and some valve train. But you got this whole set of components here that are doing a lot of functions within the engine and the vehicle itself. Yeah, it's almost like six engines. One is run by the crank, and every other one is run by the belt. You got your alternator, you've got your uh, crank, which is moving everything, you've got your water pump, you got your power steering pump, and your AC compressor, all with this one serpentine belt that goes around all of them. Yeah, and in the old days, it used to be split up. So you might have a different belt on you know, a different component or maybe one or two connected mm -hmm. together. But now that one crankshaft and that one belt is driving everything. Now there's different dynamics in each component. Like, for example, you might have a constant load, you know, as this is spinning, but once that AC kicks on, bang, there's an instant load onto the system. Mm -hmm. Well, the alternator acts differently. When you accelerate, this crank is trying to wind everything up. Well, there's a lot of mass in here. There's a lot of windings in this alternator. So this is getting a lot of load to spin it up. As soon as you lift the throttle, that mass wants to keep spinning and it wants to shoot the belt forward. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on in there because they're all connected. And that's why as a system, they've got to be designed right and you got to maintain them right. Yeah, it's hard to keep that tension on every single one of these surfaces with this one little tensioner. <laughs> and that tensioner takes a lot of strength. I mean, if you put this wrench on it, show yeah. them how much leverage it takes just to move it. Now, here's a really long lever arm here, but I mean, still, I can feel how much load is on there. That tension has to be critical over time. So it may be fresh in the beginning, but as the system wears and as that spring starts to fatigue, that's an important item that you want to replace as you replace your belt. Now, of course, you want to do your idlers too, because you know, they get a lot of load on them. A lot of those bearings will start to wear out over time. So to, to do it right, you just go ahead and bang, you throw in some pretty inexpensive components, yep. and the whole thing is done right. It'll last you forever again. So. Yeah, and there's several different types. We just grabbed a couple to show you, but I mean, you try to move this thing, there's no way. There's a, this is more of a shock type. It's actually hydraulic fluid, so there's a little valve, so that kind of moves back and forth. You know, another kind of primitive spring type. So there's all different ones. But uh, like he said, go ahead and replace the idler. Go or hit the idler. Go ahead and replace the tensioner at the same time while you do a belt. Yeah, and there's other things you want to look for too. Now we showed you about belt construction. You know, newer belts are made with EPDM. Now EPDM is a much more robust material than the old neoprene stuff. And you don't see the cracking and chunking like pieces coming apart. So you look at it and you think, well, that's still good. But it's all about wear. So these grooves start to wear out. And now, you know, the belt isn't riding on these side surfaces. It starts to bottom out. Now you have no place for water, debris, dirt, rocks, and stuff to go. So you can start hydroplaning, slipping, building heat, and you can start affecting all the other components. So you want to measure that. You want to measure your groove depths. And you want to read your belt. Read it across to see if you've got uneven wear. You may have, you know, alignment problem. Now here's a cool Gates tool. Mm -hmm. This is a laser alignment tool. Because Brian's got it, I'm gonna put my you know, your goggles safety on goggles on. He might shoot my eye out. Yeah. But see, what you'll do is you'll line up you know, one pulley across the next, and you can go around the system and see if you've got something out of whack. So read your belt properly, make sure your system is good, and then you can just forget about it. Enjoy your ride and go have a good time. So with that, I think it's time to break this thing down and start looking at all the bad things that we did to it. Can't take you seriously with those glasses. <laughs> all right, we're gonna take a break right now. We'll be back, stay tuned. Those are hilarious. Hey, welcome back. Now we kind of put this thing through a little extra abuse. You know, once it started to get hot, we drove it a little bit farther, so it'll accelerate some of the damage, but it's some of the things that you'll see if you don't properly take care of your systems and you do some kind of similar overheating and whatnot. Yeah, it went all the way from overheat to lockup. Yeah, ooh, look, look at nice. that. I haven't seen something like this in a really long time. This got so hot, it smoked the belt drive for this timing drive here you can even see there's ball bearings down in there the whole yeah the pulley's actually behind it so it actually melted that thing so i have a feeling we're going to see some pretty interesting stuff so why don't you follow along with us hey check it out i got a ball bearing in here i got a ball bearing there i got one here and I got a whole mess of ugly stuff collected down there. This is gonna be fun. All right, we're gonna pull these cams out and then we can get these head bolts and pop the head off. Now these cam lobes over here look pretty decent, but you can start to see these guys over here under a little bit of stress. A lot of heat in that oil, you don't have coolant. So that oil is gonna get hot, it's gonna lose its uh, viscosity and getting thinner and thinner. So a lot of these wear surfaces 
probably going to start looking pretty cooked. Get the cylinder head go. off. I can take a look at it. Now, anytime you get an engine hot, you know, you can kind of fix them. It takes a little bit of work. Here's some of the things you want to look for. Now, there's a lot of running surfaces, you know, the cam and the cam bearings, the cam journals. And uh, here's a couple of caps, and they don't look too bad, but they've got some signs of scuffing. So all your running surfaces you want to take a look at, whether you've scuffed any of your buckets, you know, keep an eye on that. Now, we'll look at the bottom side. This is kind of critical here. So, I don't see anything too far off right now, but what we've done is by overheating it, you've actually overaged the material. This is aluminum, so it's got heat treatments. It's going to give the material hardness and strength. Well, we've overtempted, especially in areas like between exhaust seats. It's hard to get a cooling jacket too close to there. So these are your hottest running areas around the spark plug and between the seats. So more than likely, we've overaged this material and we've lost some strength. So if you overheat it too much, you can lose a lot of rigidity to hold in these valve seat inserts. You know, you can start to develop cracks a lot prematurely. So overheating an engine's really bad. You can fix it. A lot of times you'll get a warpage in the head, maybe the block. You can skim cut them, but you could lose a lot of strength that will kind of eat you over time. Let's take a look at this head gasket. Typically, you know, if you overheat an engine, you know, even if you kind of refill it and it runs for a little while, you may end up with a blown head gasket. Yeah, one thing you want to look for is, you know, carbon tracking. So basically, any of these combustion gases trying to bleed out into a water jacket, maybe an oil drain. You know, another thing is you've gotten this so hot, then these pistons get soft and they'll start scuffing, leaving material. So look in your cylinder bores and see if you've got any metal transfer from your piston onto your cylinder walls. This doesn't look too bad. The timing system went quick and saved a lot of real big damage, but there's a lot of hurt still on here. Maybe we should look under the bottom. Oops, the other way. And uh, check out some of these bearings. All right, now we've got the mains out and we've got the rod caps out. We're looking at the crank itself and really it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, it probably polished up. We'd have to check the diameters, make sure we're in spec. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rods themselves, the bearings in both are pretty much abused. Now here's a decent looking bearing. It's got reasonable wear to it. Light scratching, a little bit of polishing. That's okay for this kind of lifespan. Now these other ones, ah, they're kind of hurt. We're starting to see some fatigue and some lifting, you know, of some material actually from the bearing. So we're losing that. The rods, boy, they're on the borderline. You can see some serious scuffing. This guy, I mean, he has no spring left. It just sets in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the crush between the cap and the rod that's holding that bearing from spinning. So, I mean, any one of these could have let go and spun. And once you spun a bearing, boom, you might have rods out the side of your block. So this is about maintenance of your engine, you know, whether it's your front end drive, your accessories, you know, your belts, you got to check your water pump, sure. make sure you got coolant levels, change your oil, make sure you've got oil level right, you know, because <laughs> otherwise, as Brian's implying, you're going to have a stinky engine. That's some burnt oil smell. Yeah, this so. is one nasty smelling engine. If you don't take care of it yourself, you got no one to blame, but you know. That's right. You. So anyway, we're running out of time here, so we're going to take a break. Stick around. We've got more for you. Welcome back. All right, the big thing about this show today, if you come away with something is, if you're gonna replace parts, if you're gonna do maintenance, order the proper premium part. Right, and don't look at it as just a part. Look at it as a system, right? You're not gonna change your brake pad and not turn the rotor or put a new rotor on, right? It wouldn't make sense. So when you're changing a component, look at everything around it and make sure that you got the right system approach to fixing and maintaining your car. Now here's a cool lineup from Gates. They've got everything for all different applications. I mean, they supply to every OEM around the world. They've got plants all over the place. Now, belts are kind of interesting. They're actually a recipe of materials and layers. You know, and you can see here we've got, you know, outside layers, we've got cords on the inside, you know, we've got inside layers, and they all do something different, you know, as far as the mm -hmm. functionality of the belt. Now this one's kind of neat. This is their stretch fit belt sort of a new technology where you don't need a tensioner on certain applications. Yep. So it's just the belt and it pops on, runs like it should. Now here's a cool one too. This has an inside layer on both insides. Mm -hmm. So it actually runs on <laughs> both sides of the belt. So that's a very specific application. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got, this is their Fleet Runner series. So this yep. is for heavy duty applications. And you know, when you want to go racing, sure, they got you covered heavy duty on that yep. category as well. And also speaking of gates, if you go to their website, they've got this little tool. It will check the depth of your belt. So you know when it's time to replace and it's a freebie. Freebies are always good. So right tool for the right job is a great thing. You know, hopefully you learned a little bit about maintenance today. You know, the better you take care of your car, the better it's gonna take care of you. That's right. And now we gotta take a break, hold on.